Some people have the strangest idea about reading the Bible. They think that they must start from Genesis 1 and read clean down to Revelation. But that can hardly be desired because when you get down in those deep books, you bog up and you get weary and you get disgusted. The best way i found to read the Bible is to start with one of the simple books, such as the Gospel of Mark. Mark has the earliest record of the life and death of Jesus as told by eyewitnesses to John Mark. The many references to Peter suggests that most of the information was provided by the big fisherman himself, which makes the story more interesting. Mark's Gospel is full of action and you'll find it very easy to read. It will not only introduce you to the New Testament, but also to the great basic facts of the Christian faith. Next we read the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew's Gospel was written a little bit later than Mark, but it includes every line of it. In addition, however, Matthew has many of the teachings of Jesus that Mark don't have. Matthew records six of Jesus' sermons, the first and the most familiar one being the Sermon on the Mount. In this are found the Beatitudes, the Golden Rule, and the Lord's Prayer. The second sermon, chapter 10, tells how the gospel should be preached. The third sermon, chapter 13, deals with the growth of the kingdom in a series of parables or stories. The fourth sermon, chapter 18, teaches forgiveness and humility. The fifth sermon, chapter, chapter 23, is a rebuke to the Pharisees because of their hypocrisy. And the sixth Simon, chapter 24 and 25, is the destruction of Jerusalem and the end of the world. Now these six sermons will give you a clear picture of the beautiful message that Jesus gave to the people of his day. Next you read the Gospel written by Luke. Luke has been called the church's first historian because of attention paid to important details such as the name and the year of the Roman Emperor who was on the throne at the time when John the Baptist began to preach. Luke's interest in medical matters gave him a humanitarian outlook, which was no doubt the reason why he recorded the parables of the Good Samaritan, the Prodigal Son, and the Rich Man and Lazarus. None of the other Gospels have those parables only him. When you have completed Luke, your true appreciation of the Gospel of Christ will have been further enhanced. Next, you read the Gospel of John. John's Gospel is quite different from all the others, and in some respects it is the most beautiful of all. John's Gospel was written at least a half a century, 50 years later than Luke and many changes had taken place at that time. Two generations had died since Jesus died on the cross. The, the, the Christian church had been established, and John was led to write for the encouragement of the, of the church, his most treasured memories of Jesus. So when you would have completed the four Gospels, you would have, would have had the highest and the finest approach to the Bible. You can then go forward to the book of Acts and read all about Luke's story of the early church, or you can turn back to Genesis and read all about the beginning of the tragedy of sin, which was the reason why Jesus died on the cross. You look for the stories in the Bible, there are hundreds covering a variety of many subjects. You pick out the biography, the Bible is full of them. And not like any other book, the Bible records the bad as well as the good points about its various characters. You might want to concentrate, concentrate on Joseph and read all that is said about him from the day of his birth as Rachel's firstborn to the proud day when Pharaoh placed the destiny of Egypt in his hands. 
take Moses, the great emancipator of the, of the Jews, and read up all about his boy, as his mother placed him on an ark of bulrushes beside a river Nile, until he stood on Mount Sinai and talked with God face to face. Joshua will give you many thrilling moments from the time he won Israel's first battle with the Amalekites through to the capture of Jericho and then all of Palestine. David, of course, will break your heart as he steps on the Bible scene as an innocent shepherd lad until his stirring orations as the dying king of Israel. His story, incidentally, is the longest story, covering about one thirteenth of the whole Old Testament. If you want to know more about Solomon, the king who was renowned for his wisdom and for threatening to cut a disputed baby in half, you read the first eleven chapters of First Kings. Elijah is another character you would want to study. He and his successor Elisha were the two greatest Hebrew prophets of the ninth century BC. Like others failed to do, they caused the power of God to work for them. They brought fire down from heaven, they raised the dead, and they performed many more miracles, while Elisha even made an ox to him. The most notable bibliography in the New Testament, apart from the story of Jesus and a few glimpses of his disciples, is that of Paul. Paul steps on the Bible scene in Acts 7 and 58 as an unofficial of the Sanhedrin Council at the stoning of Stevenson. He moves to the center of the stage in chapter 8, and he stays there until the last voice of the book. His three missionary journeys are told in much detail as he strives to bring the story of Christ to Jerusalem, Damascus, Athens, Ephesus, Philippi, and Rome. Paul is what is called the great city evangelist of the first century AD. That's a story no one should fail to read. Thanks.